chest voice or not enough head voice. And this exercise, this five tone ah, is really, really good at sort of showing us all of the nooks and crannies, the problems, the areas of the voice that, that may be a bit of a challenge. Now, I've known this voice for a very long time, and she's a very high singer. Um, she's a coloratura, some of you know that term, it means a very, very high soprano. Even though she's a musical theater singer, she still is a coloratura. So, we'll do some things with her. Can I just come over here on this side? Take your mic if you can. <clears throat> in a few minutes. So we're going to start on five-tone ah. Again, the reason we use the ah sound is because it's the most difficult vowel to go from one part of the voice to the other. So if you're trying to go from chest voice to head voice and you have nothing in the top, this exercise is going to demonstrate that. If you are the other problem, we have nothing in the bottom, it's also going to show us that. And from that perspective, we then can create a, a lesson plan, right? So make it, here we go, just a five-tone ah. ah. Yes, chest voice. <clears throat> Very nice. Anybody in the room confused and does not understand that she's in chest voice? Everybody understand that? Yes. Good. Let's go on. <clears throat> so that's an A flat above uh, middle C, so above C4. <clears throat> This is the last note of her straight chest voice. Everything from this point on, if she's singing well, she's going to be mixing. So we're going to be grabbing some of the head voice experience and, and putting it together with the chest experience as we go to the next section. This is the hardest place to sing. This first bridge is the most challenging. Whether you're a male or a female, it's more challenging for men because we live in the chest voice. But it is very challenging for female singers who are not classically if they're not performing classically a lot because they don't, they live in that space. So we'll see what Megan does. So here's the A natural, D to A, M. <laughs> so the second note of the first bridge, and she's right in the middle of it. What happened there? Did you hear that little thing, right? So based on what you were saying earlier, we didn't hear, ah, she didn't do that, and she didn't do, Oh, where there's no chest, she had a little bit of a toggle there, a little bit of a maybe inconsistency, but it was very, very, very good. Try to get it. I mean, she's doing very, very well. And so that note is an E natural. This is E above C above middle C. So this is the beginning of her second bridge. And you could feel it from the A flat, the E flat. She changed resonance. It felt like something was adjusting. Let's go back and show them that again. So here is F sharp to C sharp. So this is right before the second bridge. And go. Come back to that chest voice. There you go. And there's our little transitional blip. Here's the end of the second, first bridge. And here's the beginning of the second bridge. Right there. Good job. We don't really want to tell the singers this is what's going to happen here. She just did it. You felt this sort of adjustment of resonance. It went from more of a uh sound to more of a wing sound as she went into that high A, A flat area. I try that again so they can hear the difference. It's a C sharp to G sharp. And ah. So there's the end of that section. There's the new voice right here. You hear it? It's the beginning of a third bridge. B flat must be natural. Now we're approaching the end of our third bridge. And that's the last note. Watch this. Now she's in a new voice. One more just to scare you. And there's the, there's the fourth bridge. You've got a little toggle there at the fourth bridge. So at every bridge. Nice and done. So at every bridge. We're going to see something happen. The body is saying, I need to adjust. It's like being in a car where you have a manual transmission. You can only drive so far in first gear. You have to, at some point, put the clutch in and change into second gear. And that's similar to what's going on at each transition area, what we call a bridge. <clears throat> the original word is passaggio. 
and it means passageway or pathway from one thing to the other. And the passaggio at her second is simply transitioning from the first into the third. So she's transitioning around that really, really difficult area. But I put her on the most complicated vowel. That's the hardest vowel to sing on. Open ah is really, really difficult. Any other exercise that I would give her from this point forward would be significantly less taxing on her psychology, her brain, as well as her physiology, her vocal cords. So she hits those notes with an open awe, especially that second and third, and she's gonna feel like she's really, really in trouble. It feels very, very insecure, correct? You feel, anybody, any sopranos in the room get to those particular notes and you have issues or concerns? You have problems up there? Yeah. yeah. It's, it's extremely common. Most of the time, most people who sing pop or musical theater or even rock, they don't, they don't work that part of the voice enough, and so they, they're so dominant in the chest that they don't spend enough time up there. So when you're practicing, when you're vocalizing, you need to be going above those challenge areas so that you can feel what the next room is like. Nicely done. So um, do I get to work? Yeah. Or just, so I get to work? Okay. So just for a minute, because she's a very, very light singer, I'm only going to do a couple of lip bubbles because that encourages less chord closure than, for example, an ah-ah or an ah-ah. So with a light singer like this, we don't want to spend a lot of time there because she's just going to take more weight out of the voice, right? So lip bubbles and tongue trills are designed to remove weight as and ahs are designed to encourage more weight. They'll put more weight back into the mechanism as, you, as the singer goes up towards those bridges. So because her voice is so light and high as a coloratura, we want to be very, very careful. We don't want to spend too much time down there because she's going to get really frustrated, right? <clears throat> I think the first song that I heard her sing, it's been a decade, but I think it was Wild Party. The Life of the Party. The Life of the Party, an Idina Menzel song. I was from, there. <laughs> from you were there. Wild Party, The Life of the... Were you there, Chelsea? Yeah. yeah, she was my student first. Yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and here they're all together. So. Here we are. <laughs> anyway, the song that she came with was was originally performed by Dina Menzel, who was who did Wicked. She was Alpha Bun Wicked, as Chelsea was saying. The problem is, is that this is not an Idina Menzel voice. If you had to pick, is she more Glinda the Good Witch or Alpha the Bad Witch? Which one would she be, just based on the sound that you're hearing? This is a Kristen Chenoweth voice, much more than an Idina Menzel voice. And so to put Idina Menzel type music into a, a tiny body like this, small diminutive body, and with very, very, very small vocal cords that are used to singing very, very high, it's very difficult on a singer like this. And you can get into trouble really quickly, and she did, because her instructor at her university was having her get bigger and bigger and heavier and heavier and heavier, and then it ended up causing some pretty serious damage. So it's, that's why it's so important. We don't want to say to a singer, um, you're a soprano or you're an alto or you're this, so you have to sing everything that every soprano is sung. That's just not accurate. You must then understand the different kinds of sopranos. So let's do a little bit of lip bubble, just for fun. Let's see what you do. Lip bubble. Yeah. I'll let that mic scoot up. There you go. So you find really quickly the top is easy for her. It's like nothing. If I pulled in Chelsea or Stephanie or more of a typical lyric soprano, it would hit the notes as well, but it wouldn't have this ease. She's very easy up here. It's like she's doing nothing. It's a high E above high C. Here's a high F. High G. Low, low, low air. You go somewhere on the top of the air. See, she's very, very, very high. She's up into her fourth bridge now. So because of that, we know that this is a very, very high, lighter, more delicate voice. We have to be very, very careful the repertoire that we choose for her. What have you been singing lately? I have been singing some pop music. Like? Um, some Demi Lovato. Okay. Who do you think, who would, who would be a pop singer that would work with a high, light voice like this, other than Demi? Demi's a good choice. Very good. Who? Tori Kelly. Kelly. Who else? Ariana. Ariana Grande. This is very similar to her voice. Ariana Grande's voice is not a big voice. It's a relatively small voice, like Megan's. 
<clears throat> it doesn't mean it's not an effective voice. You can have a small voice and have a massive career, but you have to find the balance that the voice have, that, that it comes with. You have to identify what you're built to do. Any other singers that she could? Anybody you think she might want to avoid? Lady Gaga. <laughs> Lady Gaga. I think avoid well, Lady Gaga because it's not a very good voice, but. Um, I find her music interesting, but I don't find her voice compelling at all. Um, I would say somebody like Whitney Houston would be problematic for her. Adele would be problematic for her. Even though Whitney's a soprano, Adele's more of a mezzo, alto-ish. We don't really keep tabs when we're dealing with pop singers, but... <clears throat> But because of that, she if she were to sing Adele music, it would be like her singing Idina Menzel music. Sorry. Yes. Are you saying that you couldn't adapt it, like um, no. for a small voice? Mm -mm. You are you come with what you come with. But like adapt the song or or. Oh, you're saying change the key of the song? Sure, yeah. of course you could do that. But still, you're going to your brain is going to want to do what Adele did. You know, if you're singing when we were young, you're singing. Um, or something. Um, oh, yes. What's it called? What's her big song? Like, Someone like you. Rolling, Rolling in the deep. Yeah. You, she could never do that in that key. But she could modify the key. And yeah. we would take it out. Yeah. Very good point. Or Anybody else have a comment? Or something like that. So it yeah, the, the problem that you're going to have, though, here's what you're going to have. Every singer that then comes to my studio who we've adapted the key for, now they're going to get in their car, and they're going to want to sing it with her. So that's the challenge. So I would not do that with a new singer. This is obviously not a new singer. None of you are probably new singers. But with a new singer, I would not, I would not allow that to happen at the beginning of their training. Maybe with time. Keys are huge. When I work with professional like, like rock bands and things like that, most of my work with those bands is choosing the right keys, helping them identify the keys. And this might surprise some of you. We do not... We do not lower the key when a singer is having a hard time hitting a high note. We raise the key. And that could be very counterintuitive to some of you. And the reason we do that, if I raise the key for Megan, she's singing an Adele song, and I raise the key, it's going to get her into her mix easier. If I lower the key, it's going to lock her into chest. And she's going to be, uh, she's going to have way too much chest for that, for that kind of a song. So adapting by changing the keys is a great idea. And when you're working with a singer who comes in singing whatever, whatever the kind of music is and it's too heavy, don't lower the keys and don't let them lower the keys. If you're a teacher, don't let them lower the keys. Raise the key and you'll get them tipped into the next part of the voice so much sooner and make a very, very, very big difference to that singer. So she's doing that so let's put her on a couple of bratty things to see if we can get the voice together. Neat, 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 nasty, neat. And, <coughs> Chest voice in the water. Genetically, they can't hit it, or because they're not at the point where they are at the mm -hmm. moment. Doesn't Maybe matter. I, I still would raise the key because raising the key might sacrifice something at the top of the song, but not raising the key will guarantee destruction at the bottom of the song with a voice like this. So you must raise the key to get her out of the basement because she'll never have any volume down there, and she'll start going. Ugh. I mean, Adele sings down here. Try to sing that note. <laughs> and this is my point. She's built to be a color of Tura. I mean, she was that way when I met her a decade ago. She's still that way. And you're how old now? 30. So she's 30 years old now. In 20 years, she'll be 50, and I guarantee you that she'll have the exact same voice. She might get a little bit more of an extension of the bottom, which happens to women at menopause, but I don't think we, that's happening yet with her. 
So you have a long time, we have a long time, and you must be very careful with a voice like this, because it, these are the easiest voices to destroy. These are the easiest voices to get into trouble, because they're so delicate. It's like a little tiny chirping bird. They're just so delicate. And that's why they sing Green Finch and Linnet Bird. They sing the Vengeance Aria, Mozart's Vengeance Aria, Alleluia, Mozart's Alleluia. They're very light, delicate, high voices. There's a hand back here. Why does she start from the bottom? Well, I started her on a G. The G? Yeah. But even the G for her, try to sing an other. Oh. It's very difficult. Will you sing a G for me? Oh. Again, next to her. Oh. No, not you, Megan. Next. Oh. Becky. Oh. Right here. That's, oh. That's hard for her. Oh. Stephanie. Oh. See the difference between Chelsea and Stephanie? Do it again, Ste Chelsea. Uh, now, Stephanie, uh, hear it? Yeah. Those are two different voice types. Mm -hmm. So if I said to you, they're both sopranos, which they may well be, it doesn't really matter because Chelsea has a very, very difficult time compared to Stephanie getting down at the bottom of her voice. But if I took Stephanie way up high, like I'm taking Megan, she would start to have problems up there. And that's why it's so important to understand what is in front of you at that moment, because it changes. Every singer has a different set of problems. Make sense? Did that answer your question back there? Okay, good. So let's take you a little higher. How much time do we have? We need to. We need to write. Okay, one more set. Okay. Nay, nay, nay. Nay, nay, nay. Nay, nay, nay. There you go. characterize the voice stylistically but just listen to what we were talking about at the beginning is she in chest voice and does she blend up into her mixed voice or do we have some catastrophic failure nay 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 that's a catastrophic failure or nay 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 that's a catastrophic failure she did none of those so we take her out of the bad category put her into a good category but then we have to go from good to great where it's really evenly balanced and that's what she just did beautifully well so nice job <laughs>